What's up guys? I'm glad to finally have another review up. However, this is an anime adaptation review, and it's specifically on Death Note on Netflix. I know this is late, I didn't want it to be this late, but you know what happened? A video got claimed. I uploaded it, it got claimed, it was annoying, and that's why there wasn't any videos that other week. I apologize for that. However, oh yeah, also too, yeah, I'm getting gaming videos up this week because I had, I just... Stuff was late last week. I remember the hurricane and all that other crazy stuff. So, just, just try to try to bear with me, okay? A lot of stuff happened, but if I could just move past that for a bit, move past all those things of why it got claimed and all those stuff, I still have to put out this video, and I really wanted to. So here it is, Death Note review on Netflix. Let's go. So guys, before I get my opinion on this entire movie, I do want to say one thing. I did not see the anime yet of this on purpose. After this review, and if it doesn't get claimed, okay, it won't get claimed. I'm not going to use movie clips, so it's definitely not going to get claimed. But pretty much, I haven't seen the video, I'm sorry, I haven't seen the anime, entire anime, or an, even a single episode yet. I did read the synopsis of the anime though, so I got a good idea of what the source material is supposed to be like. But I haven't actually seen it, so I did want to put that out there. I am going to see the anime, then I'm going to make another Death Note review. I don't know when that'll be, but I'll do it one day, okay? Put it that way, I'm going to do it one day. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to say that, and actually, let's get into the review now. So, Death Note, what is it about? Well, first of all, it's a rather simple plot line. It isn't that deep and complicated, uh, but it does... It I, I think the movie handled the plot fine, but it fell short with the characters. I'll go to that in depth a little later on, but what the plot of this sh movie is, is it's about a kid named Light Turner. It's, it's about a kid, for some reason he's white, at a high school named Light Turner. He finds this book that falls out of the sky, pretty much. I imagine this, the book caused the storm in this little scene here in the beginning. Again, I can't show any uh, I can't show any footage, but you guys understand what I mean if you've already seen it. And the book lands on the ground, he takes it, and he puts it in his backpack, and he pretty much has the book. And then, pretty much, the whole plot is, is that this book can kill people if you write their name in it, and a cause of death. It can kill them. There are limitations, mind you, but that's pretty much the premise. Oh. You see, I stopped the other recording of this right before this because I got a call, and now I have another call. Hold on a second. Oh my god. I know it feels like I'm repeating myself, but I just got off of a call that was literally 15 minutes long, so please uh, bear with me. I'm going to restart the idea. The, the overview of the movie or the, the synopsis really quickly. So, the story follows Light Turner, a high school student, and he finds a book called The Death Note. The Death Note has the ability to kill anyone as long as you write their name and a way they die. Also, there are limitations to this book, but we learn that as we get into other parts of the movie. Light Turner then tries and uses the book, and after he uses the book, he realizes this book is the real deal, and he tries to kind of become a hero or a vig or more so of a vigilante. He goes around pretty much writing people's names in there that's done awful crimes and killing them. People have been dying and mysteriously just suiciding all over the world, and this gets the attention of one of the best detectives in the world, which his name is L, and pretty much it becomes a battle of whose wits are better than the others kind of that's pretty much what of that's pretty much what death note pretty much is uh there's also another character that we shall not name in this synopsis uh you you know who she is i i already gave it away she uh but that's pretty much the overview of how this entire movie is the the plot isn't bad i think the characters are bad. Not all of them, 
There's two that I like. The rest? Uh, the rest kind of disappointed me. It's like a lot of these characters... Okay, not all of them. Not all of them. Okay, two of them in particular were really awful, and two of them were really good. And there was like another one that was kind of in the middle that was like, eh, he's not awful, but he's not amazing. Uh, let, let me stop being so cryptic about this and actually just start going through the characters. So, the characters I'm going to talk about to kind of give you guys my idea, my, my pros and my cons of each of these characters, and how they made the movie good, and how they destroyed the movie. That's how, that's how I'm going to go through this. So, first of all, Light Turner, our main character. We've got his girlfriend, which, Jesus Christ, I forgot her name. Uh... Ah, okay, this was her name. Okay, see, I forgot. Okay, you know, I'll be honest, everyone. The reason why I forgot is because I really to, I really hate this character. Wait, her name is Mia. So, his girlfriend, Mia. I hate this character. That's why I literally forgot her name. I just had to look it up. Another character is Ryuk, Watari, and L. And I'll, I'll throw in the father as well. I'll throw, I want to talk about the father too. So first, first of all, let me talk about Light, our main protagonist of the story. My opinion on Light. He's a character that I feel like has a very good intention. I think he has good intentions, but has bad... What could I say? I think he has bad reactions or either bad... Or just does bad choices into a lot of these situations. And I find him to be a little too driven... To please his girlfriend. I think that in itself is why I probably don't like this character. Although, his, his good side is the fact that he doesn't want to hurt innocent people. But, uh, you know what? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let me first talk about really his personality. I think Light Turner is actually a good person at heart. But he's easily manipulated. But... He also has a lot of justification in a way in some of the stuff that he does do in this series. There's few stuff, or sorry, in the show, not the series, uh, that does warrant why he did certain things. But I feel like Light as a whole is somewhat melodramatic a bit. Like when he first meets Ryuk, that scream is insane. How he acts is just insane. And it's just crazy. Not to mention... When he finds out that the Death Note can actually kill people and he tries it once, he pretty much tells the first person about this that he meets, which happens to be the character that I hate, Mia. And it's just such an awkward kind of communication between him and Mia in the beginning. Because it's like, you, you literally tell her you don't want to tell her about the Death Note, but then you ask her, do you really want to know about the Death Note? What? You just said that you don't want her, anyone to know about it, and then you just pretty much blab it out to the first person that axes you about it. And it's just... I don't... Light, Light Turner... You see, the issue with this character is that in the anime, he's supposed to be a genius. Light Turner is everything but a genius. He is an, he's an idiot. I'll be honest, he's really an idiot. I don't see anything that makes him a, a genius. The funny thing, too, is about this movie is that they try to make Light Turner seem like he's a genius by making him do other kids' homework for money. Apparently, that means you're a world-class genius, but let's all be honest, Light Turner, he's just a regular white kid. It's high school. There's nothing special about him. And he, he does have redeeming qualities, but he's just so stupid. And he's so easily manipulated. It's just dumb, guys. It's dumb. I really, I don't, I, I like Light Turner's heart, but I don't like his character. It's weird, but that's my opinion on Light Turner. He made this movie feel stupid. 
that's what Light Turner really did. He made everything feel dumbed down. And he just did nothing but yell and shout and kind of just whine about a lot of stuff. Now, let me kind of talk about L. <laughs> I actually like this character. I'm not gonna lie. I found him being like him with his big title of being the best detective in the world is interesting to me. That's interesting. Even his uh, upbringing, how he was put in this special uh, conditioning facility that was like they, they, they even showed like they hinted at like the Illuminati and like the eyes and the serpent. It really gave you an unsettling vibe around this character that was really kind of like, what the heck happened to this kid when he was younger? Or happened to this man when he was younger as a kid? And now he's like this, he's a hyper analytical thinker that has an interesting way about himself and how he, pre how he presents himself. It's rather interesting. Like how they show him is how they show him is eating lots of candy and having these really weird twerk, like, like uh, kinks and really like interesting things that we don't really know why he's like this way like i don't know why light likes candy so much but he really does like it and um that's that's my new though that's an interesting like little character uh kind of designed with him but one thing to point out with his personality is the fact that l what i find really interesting about him is that he's the only detective to not carry a gun he doesn't want to use guns. I'm talking about the beginning, okay? I'll get into the end of the movie. I'll talk, I'll talk about that later. Uh, he, he doesn't like to carry guns. He likes to do things on his own. And he has a way of pretty much... How can I say? He has a way of always knowing what's kind of behind everything. Like, he... How, you know how everyone would normally see things at the surface level? He doesn't do that. He sees beyond the surface. He sees the root of everything at the start. He's a really interesting person because no one can really wrap their head around L and how he's so good at just looking at the deeper levels of things and kind of like the symbolism, like the phrase Kira that light goes by uh, when he does this. He already knew, okay, no, that's a misdirection. He wants us to think he's in Japan. No, no, no. He's not in Japan. He's actually in the U.S. He's the only one who actually looked straight through that and was like, okay, no, I'm not falling for your misdirection. I already know what you're really about. Like, I found that kind of cool and kind of interesting. Those are kind of the best things I can say about L. But now, let's talk about the bad stuff. Oh, Lord. L, you had so much potential in this movie. You had so much potential. I loved your character. You were probably the best character until this all stuff happens as soon as Watari his boy dies I'll talk about Watari too don't worry uh as soon as his boy goes missing and he dies and obviously Light Turner kills him actually no sorry Light Turner actually doesn't kill him Maya actually killed him she did some underhanded stuff uh by taking the page and hiding it so that he couldn't burn it so that Light Turner couldn't burn it and save him uh but pretty much after he goes missing Light loses cool. Remember when I said he didn't like guns? He didn't carry a gun? Uh, he also made a quote in this uh, movie that they were quote-unquote distracting. All of a sudden, at the end of the movie, he has a gun chasing him, angry, screaming, like, uh, crying. I, I don't I don't know what happened to L, guys. I don't know why the character, sorry, the director decided to do this to the character. The character was awesome. But they just ruined it by making him go crazy, losing his cool, everything about his character, all of the poise he had was destroyed halfway through the film when his boy went missing. And it just ruined the character for me as a whole. Why are you chasing him with 80s music in a car scene? So the next character I want to talk about is Ryuk. <laughs> much the, the the death god the controller the 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 spirit of it 
Ryuk is a very interesting character because I must say he's the only character of this entire film with absolutely no flaws. He's a flawless character in this show. Or sorry, in this movie. And why do I say this? Because Ryuk actually, he stays true to his character the entire way through. Everything he says is either comedic and funny and he has a bit of like lightheartedness to him. But he's very serious too. And he also is very mysterious. There's a lot of hints he gives about his character and about of other stuff in the past. Like he said that he has a past owner that passed away. I would have liked to know how they died or what happened with them. But we never really do learn about that. Also, Ryuk also says something else that's very interesting. He says, now, okay, you know what, first let me, let me talk about this part. Light Turner said that if you don't shut up, Ryuk, I'm going to write your name in the book. He said, Ryuk says, you can try, but there's four letters in my name, and the most anyone's ever gotten were two. That interests me. That's very interesting. And I really wish they expanded on that portion of the movie, but they really didn't. They just kind of went on to the battle between L and Light. You know, it, it, I really wish they kind of went into that. It was kind of like a missed opportunity, in my opinion, to kind of get rid of the Death Note permanently. Because I bet if they killed Ryuk, the Death Note would disappear and no one would ever have to be burdened with that power because it's kind of a pretty awful power. Death Note really isn't good. It's really more of an evil tool. That's kind of all I have to say about Ryuk. He's an interesting character. He has some funny comedic moments. I love his laugh. His laugh is hilarious. And uh, not really bad things I can say about him. I don't think Ryuk really did anything negative to the movie, in my opinion. Very good character. <laughs> Okay, guys, now let's talk about Watani. Watani is a rather interesting character because I find him to be equally as mysterious as Ryuk. We don't really know a whole lot about Watari in this movie. We don't know his relationship to L, who kind of seems to be a father figure or his mentor or someone to watch over him. I'm not really sure. Watari is rather interesting. There isn't really enough said about this character. But what is shown about him is that I believe he is aware of L's past. That's kind of the main thing that I kind of get around with Watari. I feel like he knows a lot about L's past and is kind of protecting him. Another thing I want to talk about with Watari too is that I don't think I find many things wrong with his character. He seems to be a rather mysterious character whose greatest interest is just to protect and to serve L. That's what it kind of feels like. Sadly, Watari does die in a way that was unnecessarily cruel because he's a character that never did anything to no one, really. He actually never even antagonized anyone. It was just completely, like, it was awful what they did to him. Watari died just getting shot up, trying to find L's name, real name, because we never do find his real name. And, uh, that's kind of how Watari's character went. I can't really say too many negative things. The only thing negative I guess I can say if I want to find something negative on this character is that that was pretty darn creepy. When he started singing in the car, can, can everyone agree with me with that? When he started singing in the car, that was really creepy. That scene as a whole, really, really just, ooh, really unsettling. But that's all I can really say about Watari. He's a really interesting character. I wish we would have learned more about him, but that's kind of it I could talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about the father. The father, unlike every other anime out there, even though it's an anime adaptation, I'm going to say treat this like an anime for a second. The father is actually somewhat active in our character's life, our main character Light's life, a little bit. He's not active enough, but he's there enough to kind of have a presence, which is something that I like about his character. Most anime, the mothers are probably not even there, or the dad's not even there, or both aren't there, or they're at a business trip across the world, 
or just for some some the, the the author needs to give some reason why the parents are not in their main child's life like it's pretty bad but it's an anime trope that i'm pretty well aware of now and it's just something that's rather common in most modern anime but you would think that but actually no they make the, the main character does have the father in his life even all the way up to the beginning of the movie all the way up until the end of the movie. However, there are pivotal points where the father isn't there, and I'm a little angry at the father for not understanding who Kira is when obviously you could just look into your kid's room if you just stay late and just look at his room and look at the death note and see what's going on with his life. Because I'll be honest, I think it's interesting that L finds out it's your son that's Kira and not the own father that knows. It's kind of sad. And it's just like, father i think you need to be a little bit more active in your in your kid's life i am aware that the mother is dead and that's heavy on light and that's heavy on the father too and he has to do so much now because the mom isn't there but it's still no excuse to not be in your kid's life uh my whole opinion on the father is that he is a father he does what he needs to do uh, not too many complaints however there is one thing i really don't like about this father in this movie and i'm gonna get on the racial aspect of this our father here does something that's rather unnecessary to our black character, L. Now, I am aware L is not black in the anime. I am aware. But the anime adaptation, he is. This is all I'm going to say. I found the scene where he put L into a headlock rather unnecessary and kind of disturbing. And if anything, it felt like police brutality. I don't like how... Our main, sorry, not our main character. Our character here, the father, and I, I kind of forgot his name. Our main, or the father's name was actually James Turner. I can't, I can't believe I didn't remember that, but that's his name. I apologize for not saying his name. I literally had forgotten and I just looked it up. So, James Turner, which is obviously Light's father. Now that I know, I literally forgot. Sorry, it's been like two weeks since I seen the movie, but I still remember it. Part, most, the most important parts I remember. But the thing about the father, or James Turner, is the fact that I don't like that how he just kind of did that to L. To the thing is, I understand that L was going far in what he was saying, but you don't need to do that to L. Let's not forget, L is very high in the government. He's extremely high up there. He has people in some pretty powerful places. I feel like James, I felt like that whole scene, what he did to, uh, to L, was just unnecessary. <laughs> Character, or sorry, the baddest character, as in evil, is probably Mia, which is interesting. Not even Ryuk, not the death god. He actually is rather neutral in this situation. It's more so Mia. Mia is prob is is obviously the main antagonist. She's obviously the main antagonist in this show. Or sorry, movie. I'm sorry I keep making that mistake, but I, I make mistakes sometimes. She is definitely the main antagonist in this movie, and I must say Maya is oh, she's so annoying. She's so annoying. And the thing about her character that kind of annoys me is that no one ever suspected her. Everyone's on light, but no one is even paying attention. The fact that Light here has a girlfriend that's equally as guilty as Light is in a lot of the situations. Now, granted, Light does only kill bad people, and only Mia's ever killed innocent people, but still. I find that, like, for world-building purposes, and just how the police are reacting to the situation, just kind of appalling, in a way. Now, with Mia, there's quite a lot of scenes... That pretty much made, that made me piss that pissed me off with her. So the first thing I gotta say is that the one scene that I didn't really like was the scene where she suggested that they should kill his father. That scene, absolutely awful. I, uh, that was awful. And I I must say that was one of the few, the few times in the movie where I actually in, agreed with what lights how light reacted crazy. That actually was the correct reaction. How are you going to kill his own father, your boyfriend's father? How are you going to even do that? Are you kidding me? That 
that was aggravating. Another scene that I got to talk about too is the last scene where she dies into the feathers. I must say, sorry, not feathers, uh, petals. That, I hated that scene so much because she died too beautifully. She needed to die a lot worse because she made a lot of people die pretty awful. She had people die off buildings. She had another dude shot. She had Watari shot. I'm sorry, but that, the way of movie handling how her death was absolutely awful. I did not agree with that at all, how they should have killed her. She healed her much worse. I do like that Light ended up killing her because she really was going insane. But still, she didn't die in the way that she should have died. She should have died in a way that was far more gruesome, in my opinion. And this movie did not shy away from showing gruesome death. So I was very surprised that they went for such a tame death with her. Another thing about uh, Mia is that she's very manipulative. As her personality goes, she's manipulative, she's selfish, she's very sadistic, and she's someone who's obsessed with death. I just, I, I don't really understand why Light took to any kind of appeal to this character, mainly because everything about her stands against Light's ideals. I really don't understand why he would be with this girl, or just tell her about it in general. I, it's just a mind-boggling to me, and I feel like, if anything, Mia is the main character in this whole show that destroys the entire, anim uh, entire anime adaptation as a movie. It really does. I think Maya plays the biggest role in why this movie was bad, in my opinion. And it's just... There's, there's just so many things about Maya that I can't go over, because... It's just too many things to talk about with her, but I think I should leave that up to you guys to watch the movie. So lastly, let me just give you guys my overall opinion on this movie. So, my overall, now the thing is, I know I did give a rating on the anime I did, when that anime was awful. Uh, I know I did a rating, but here's the thing, with movies, especially anime adaptations, I'm not going to give a rating, I'm just going to give my opinion on what you should do with this movie. To be honest, guys, as a Netflix movie, this is the movie you put on in the background if you don't know, if you just want some noise in the background. In my opinion, this movie is worth your time, but not worth the seriousness of what the movie thinks it can be. I think that, I mean, if, if I were to give this a rating, I'd give this... I give it two stars. I give it I give it two stars. I think two stars is fair. I don't believe that this movie is incoherent. I don't believe that this movie is inherently bad, and I don't think this movie has a bad plot. The issue with this entire movie is that the characters bring down the interesting plot. It was executed not the best. There were times where it's executed very well. I think the first half of this movie was the best half of this movie. The second act, past that, I don't know what the heck happened. I it, it 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 wrote itself into oblivion and just essentially committed suicide. I don't know what they were. Th I don't know what the director was thinking. Halfway into the movie, I think the first half was good. Although there's a lot of annoying what the heck moments in this movie in the beginning, especially like why the heck are you telling me about it if you want to keep this a secret? Why the heck did the police not ever investigate me and put a tail on her? Why the heck did the school even allow them to go on a killer site on school grounds? Why the heck did the father not even notice that Kira is light when his son has a book called Death Note? You could even see the fact that he killed people if you see all the names and how they died. Wouldn't that make more sense? Uh, I just... There's a lot of issues with this movie, in my opinion. But I do think it's worth your time to see it. It's not that bad beyond never watching. I watched this movie twice. I can't say that I regretted it. it. It's okay. It's a it's a it's a very appealing movie, but its execution is bad. It's got a lot of plot holes in the character, and I feel like it could have been done better. But that's my opinion. What is your opinion? I hope you guys enjoyed this movie review on Death Note. There was a lot of interruptions in this movie review. I apologize, but I had to put this out there because I thought that I des that this movie deserved a review because it is anime related. And I am doing anime stuff on my channel, so why not review it, you know? I'll review other anime adaptations maybe if you guys enjoy this.
So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys later. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye, guys.